Hey everybody, it is Debbie here, Debbie Potts, and I am the host of the Low Carb Athlete, and I am giving you a little taste of my seminar I'm doing for KetoCon 2020, which is obviously another conference canceled. So we are doing it online, virtual conference, as we will be doing many of these this year, as our world is a new place, hopefully temporarily. And I just really feel at this time we should be working on the stuff we're talking about today, training the low carb athlete to improve fat loss, athletic performance, and longevity. As we are really responsible for our own health, taking charge, taking ownership of our health and wellness. And what I'm going to talk about today is if you are fit and healthy, because there's a lot of people that exercise, but they don't do the rest of it. So over the years, I've created the holistic method, and I wrote a book, Life is Not a Race, and I really have learned a lot from my own journey of what my purpose is. And you know, I'm just following my purpose now with our new world being more concerned about you know, it's not getting a, a disease, a virus, but how do we avoid that by taking care of our whole self? So as a health and fitness practitioner, coach, leader in the industry for over 25 years, I've evolved. I always love learning. So I've started as a trainer and, you know, over the years, I've gotten all these different certifications and trainings. And during that time, actually, when I was owning my own fitness studio, I was also competing at a very high level as age group, triathlete, cyclist, and runner, or the, I can't say cyclist because I, I don't do <laughs> cycling uh, crit races, but I love endurance events. And I found that, you know, exercise is, is one thing, a one part of being healthy. And what I'll talk a little bit about today is the holistic method, how we really need to train the whole person, the whole individual to improve fat loss, health and performance and longevity, but it, it's just not enough to just to exercise. We really need to work on these other elements of the holistic method I'll talk about, which led me down this path of becoming a health coach, becoming a trainer in college, but then you know continuously go, thinking outside the box that there's more to being healthy and recently I became an FDN practitioner, which is called Functional Nutritional Therapy Practitioner, and that's a mouthful. Uh, a few years before that, I became a Functional um, Nutritional Therapy Practitioner, NTP. And before that, became one of Czech, Paul Czech's, under the Czech Institute Holistic Lifestyle Coach. And years before that, I've always been a personal trainer and triathlon coach, and um, then Ben Greenfield's program, Superhuman and Keon and into genetics. I, I want to learn more. I became a DNA fit, has a program to interpret their data with clients. I'm a DNA fit coach and want to do more of that next year with some other programs as Dr. Ben Lynch. Anyways, metabolic efficiency is a big thing I've done and I've raced many years in endurance world in all different levels, but really my, where I do my best is endurance sports. And I was I was training low carb, low heart rate since I started. In 2001, I was doing heart rate training and then started getting into the more nutrition part of it and, and curious about why we were supposed to eat so many carbohydrates and eat before we work out and eat during every hour. We're supposed to take three to 500 calories. And I, I started to wonder why, how am I supposed to ever burn fat? when I'm taking in all this sugar. So that led me down this long pathway 20 years later. I you know, am helping you now. So over those years, I did low heart rate training and I did metabolic efficiency testing. And from my own journey of, you know, curious of how I'm supposed to, you know, train and follow these recommendations that I started racing Ironmans 2001, I'm in Canada and I did other races after that, I'm trying to follow these recommendations. And all I do is throw up during the bike ride, to be honest, TMI. But I I didn't get it. It's like, what how is this supposed to work? So I kept trying and trying and trying different fuels, different calorie amounts and hydration drinks and sugar. 
and gels every hour and all I would do is have stomach problems and be sick. I started getting into metabolic efficiency testing in 2005 at the athletic hub I worked at. We did, uh, it's called New Leaf, metabolic testing cart. And so we were able to test and I'll explain what that is, but I, I just love this area. So I hope to help you learn a little bit what I have learned in my past 20 years in this world. And I've used, you know, a lot of this low carb fueling training at the end of my career. I haven't been able to race since 2012. You can read all about that in my book, Life is Not a Race. But I podcast low carb athlete. I created the holistic method five years ago, working on these eight elements you can see here on the chart. Uh, nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, movement, mobility, digestion, and gut health. Huge right now because where's your immune system? 80% in your gut. Hydration and my favorite happiness and play because a lot of us are type A, type AAA, and we get a little too serious and need to chill a little more. So happiness and play and laughter is key. So Along our topics today, I'm going to go into the low carb athlete hot topics I hear a lot about. Common problems, symptoms, preferred fuel tank. We'll talk about metabolic flexibility, being fit and unhealthy um, on the inside, metabolic flexibility, fueling optimal fat metabolism, carb timing, placement. Uh, how do you become fat adapted and how do you train and burn fat during exercise and then recover and repair? Now, I have just a little bit of time today, so we're just going to touch on a little bit. I did uh, plan on making a part two video for you, and then I'll take all these slides and I have my assistant make them into an ebook. So if you head to debbiepotts.net, I'll give you the uh, code where you can enter in uh, the KetoCon conference slides, and soon you'll be able to get an ebook copy of it. So uh, let me stay here for a second, but these pictures here, low carb. We all know about, that's why you're here, you're curious, you might be low carb already, and then I can't actually hear what you're asking your questions, but you can message me what your questions are later. But really a lot of people are in the blood sugar roller coaster, right? They have carbs, you eat them, your blood sugar goes up, you have high blood sugar, your body over corrects itself by releasing insulin and then has too much that we have low blood sugar. And then what do we do? We get cranky, we need to eat to feel better, get rid of that low blood sugar, and then we eat more, and then we just get in this cycle of this high, low blood sugar roller coaster. Often leading to frequent eating and obviously burning carbs, not fat for fuel. And you know, sugar, you'll know about insulin resistance and oxidative stress and all that goes with it. So our goal is to burn fat as athletes. The common problems athletes have as one of the fuel sources I'll recommend at the end are examples of muscle fatigue, tightness after a 30K because you're depending on glucose, carbohydrates. So you're starting to blow out of those fuel tanks or getting empty, depleted. And then we have anti-inflammatory use. I know I never did, but a lot of people have that uh, vitamin I, vitamin <laughs> ibuprofen, too much Advil to leave because they're always sore and so constant inflammation. And of course, digestive issues are huge in our sport. People having uh, gut dysbiosis, but gut issues, GI issues, all sorts of things you'll hear about. But also belly fat is a big thing and not being able to lose that belly fat, which I'll talk about in part two is probably related to a little more of the cortisol connection and the fact that you're burning carbs, not fat. So why not eat carbs over fat? Well, you all know probably already that sugar is toxic to the body and the brain. Hormones re regulate blood sugar, so we get hormone imbalances. We load the body with sugar, the hormones have to work extra hard as insulin, so we lose that sensitivity. Anything we do too much of leads to insulin resistance with insulin. We gain weight even with exercise, too many carbs, we wear out our hormones and that blood sugar roller coaster, the insulin resistance. Again, store more calories in fat over sugar. We can go longer with fat fuel. And training the body to burn fat or burn carbs over fat fuel. So we want to not be carb dependent. We want to be fat dependent. 
So if we eat more carbs, we're just teaching the body that's its go-to. It knows how to go break up carbs for fuel in our muscles. So HIIT training, that uses a little more carbs, but you can improve your body to burn a higher percentage fat the way you train. We'll talk about that next time. Fat burning enzymes and carb burners require more pre, during, and post-workout fueling. Fat burners may just need to have water and electrolytes. So, you know, you really can gain your edge and peak performance gains if you are a fat burner athlete. So there's a lot of people leading, not a lot, there should be more, but the main people in this industry of the fat adopted low carb athlete research, you'll hear about Volg and Finney, Professor Noakes, Paul Larson, Bob um, Sibahor, Dan Plews, and Phil Maffetone has done some articles with Paul Larson. So there's a lot of information out there, but there's not enough. And there's more research hopefully coming. But I must throw in here while we are talking about research, a lot of the studies are not done on women. And so if you read Dr. Stacy Sims' book, Roar, you can learn a little bit how women are not small men. And she has some great information in there that's getting updated, I think, because her book's a few years old. But anyways, if you're eating carbs all the time, you're overriding the fat-burning metabolism. You are not oxidizing fat. Constantly having these elevated levels of insulin turns off your body's ability to access its internal fat stores. So fueling constantly with simple carbs simply means you stop burning fat. Consuming carbs during exercise, Peter Atea says, putting paper on the fire first, preventing you from burning the logs. And I like the image of kindling versus the big fat log, what burns slowest, the log. And so that makes sense. Putting the paper on the fire, just gonna burn that pyre, fire, paper on the fire, and then you have to keep adding it unless you get the log burning. High fructose corn syrup, rice, pasta, bread. That's what people probably still do. They think they have to carb a load before a workout. And then the refuel post-workout with more carbs. You don't need to do that when you are fat burner. Constantly elevated insulin levels with consuming simple carbs that require constant refueling, activating the blood sugar roller coaster as sucrose and fructose. High carb intake turns off the fat burning stores, right? So Peter Tia is a, a great person to follow and if you really want to dive into research and N equals one studies, he's done a lot of exercise, endurance exercise with just taking bullion uh, soup broth to get that the sodium and water and he can just go because really what we should be striving for as endurance athletes being on dependent on the fat tank over the glycogen tank look at the difference you know it's it's obvious intuitive but it's not because of marketing and the misinformation we get out there because the big companies aren't going to make money if you're eating less, right? So same thing with teaching us how to improve our immune system. They're not gonna tell us to eat real food, do some intermittent fasting to get your vitamin D and get outside and get fresh air and get your exercise in. And same thing here, that you gotta look at who's telling you this information and regarding the low carb athlete, we want to be burning fat. We don't have to eat as much. We don't have to get all those gels and sugary drinks. So a good example that I'm sure a lot of athletes can relate to is how you became into being a low carb athlete. This person that founded S Fuels, Layton, and he said in 2013, the off season, he reduced his miles by about 90%, took out the grains, the sugars, the bread, the pastas, the juices and rice, all that stuff. And he replaced that with good quality fats and low glycemic carbohydrates. And then he found as racing, he had a greater, greater tolerance to endure long training sessions and not feeling that fatigueness that he'll get, that a lot of people get because they're carb burners. So every time he didn't need the anti-inflammatory medications, his gut distress was gone and his recovery from workouts sessions were easier, faster. So the main book that is kind of the Bible in this area is the art and science of low 
carbohydrate performance. Jeff Fullick and Dr. Jeff, Dr. Fullick and Dr. Finney, they're both brilliant and really have done a lot of research in this area. They're the ones behind the FASTER study and that was done on men, not women, but they really are kind of the early pioneers in this area as well as, you know, we got, they, well, they actually influence, I think, uh, Professor Noakes, because I recently interviewed him again, and uh, Bob Siebehor, and I know Peter Dufty's work with these guys, and so they're pretty amazing people to step out of that box of thinking we need to burn carbs, because there wasn't really a lot of research on using fat for fuel. And I found some articles I put the very end of my slides that I'll put the end of the ebook about when fat metabolism research started. And I found one article in 1984 that it was saying, you know, it created benefits to burn fat, but also they didn't recommend a high fat diet because you'll get basically heart disease and die. So we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go because of marketing. And people don't always think outside the box. So this book is a great book you can get online and get everyone to read that's an athlete. High carb diet versus low carb diet. The body switches carbs to fats, a predominant exercise fuel source. It's not able to switch from carbs to fat. So you want to improve your ability to burn fat because then you're training that body to have that backup fuel, your carbohydrates. So they explain a lot of that, a lot of research and kind of break some myths for us. Athletic performance decreases with dependence on carbohydrates as your dominant fuel source. Your fuel tank of fat has, you know, 40 to 80,000 calories versus the 2,000 calories. So it's a great, great book. You must read. All right, so let's go a little deeper. So learning how to be fat adapted, we train the body by changing what we eat. We want to flip that switch and become fat dependent. We want to stabilize that blood sugar. We want to have carb timing so we can add a little carbs when we get closer to a race and we need a little backup fuel. And then we want to be improving our performance and longevity by watching our stress levels as well as our stress from this excess training that we do as endurance athletes and really reduce mitochondrial damage because that's the longevity part of it. So Volg and Finney talk about all this, train hard, perform longer, and recover faster. And they've conducted more studies, and hopefully we can keep finding more about how to optimize your fat metabolism. I must say, there is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Our main goal is to burn fat. We all have a different microbiome, carbohydrate tolerance, food sensitivities, gut health, our genetics. Everyone has a different background. I love to think... You don't, everyone has a different thumbprint. We're not exactly the same. There's a little bit of difference between all of us. So you don't, I mean, goals to burn fat, it's, it's hard. You know, Peter Defty talks about this at all. You, you can't say like you're keto or you're paleo or you're carnivore. You know, I think there's a lot of labeling. And I always like to tell people, let's focus on getting our blood sugar balance and burn fat. Whatever your macronutrient ratio is to burn fat, that's your body, that's your ratio. So we need to find that for you. And I'll talk later about using Keto Mojo to test and not guess where your macros need to be to burn fat. And some of us, because we're athletes, we can go a little longer or a little more carbohydrates because a lot of the research for the low carb and you'll follow people, they're doing it for more the health benefits, right? They might have some different illnesses that they can correct with a low carb diet and be more ketogenic and nutritional ketosis. But we are exercising to improve our performance and longevity. So we want to look at, you know, what our body needs to burn fat as our main fuel source. Hopefully you don't have health issues because then maybe you need to be more strict if you have uh, some other things going on. But once physiologically fat adapted, Peter Dufty says that the, with carbohydrate restriction, the greater development of your aerobic capacity, aerobic engine, the greater window for carbohydrate tolerance you can have. 
So once you establish that fat adapted metabolic state, that could be two, four, six weeks or longer, depending how damaged you've been, the base of what he calls the optimal fat pyramid, OFM, can then you can build your aerobic engine to its potential and you can actually tolerate some carbohydrates, concentrated carbohydrates in both your diet and fueling so you can get that performance punch of carbs, like that extra rocket fuel. So we'll talk about this a little more later, but I just want to throw this slide in first. So everyone's a little different how they need to burn fat and the amount of carbs you can take or not take and the timing of it, it's very individualized. And it depends on your, your race day and your intensity of your training. So I know some people don't even need to take any big source of carbs on a race because they are doing low heart rate. So if you're racing at more anaerobic pace and burning fat as your main engine, but burning a percent of, of carbs in there a little more than others that aren't racing, you're gonna have to change your plan. So there's great information, Peter's article called Keto Carbs Fat Adapted Performance, How Is This Possible? So let's go into some definitions. So we've got metabolic flexibility, and that's the ability to adapt substrate oxidation rates and response changes in fuel availability. Or the opposite of that is lack of metabolic flexibility is the inability to switch to oxidation of lipids, so fat burning, to and carbohydrates appears to be an important feature of chronic disorders such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. So that organism to respond or to adapt according to changes in metabolic energy. So anyways, metabolic flexibility is a big thing you'll hear about is that the ability to adapt. Hormesis is a thing we're talking about adapting. So metabolic efficiency is my next section, all right? So this is my favorite, not my favorite, one of my favorite topics. So metabolic flexibility is to burn ideally burn fat over carbs, be able to switch back and forth, right? So metabolic efficiency is an exercise, is training your body to be more efficient at burning fat. We have two sources, carbs, fat. Carbs are more quickly converted into energy. Now the body, as we said, can only store about 2000 calories and store of glycogen in your muscles, but that if you're burning carbs is depleted about two to three hours. This is from Bob Sebahor, who wrote the book Metabolic Efficiency Training and is the owner and creator of the certification program I did. So fats, as you know, are burning more slowly and they're slowly converted in energy. So there's, they're that log versus the kindling. And we have tens of thousands of fuel source of fat in our body, even if you're a lean endurance athlete. So metabolic efficiency is a measurement of how well the body uses fat as an energy source, and we can improve that through exercise and nutrition by exercising at lower intensities and changing how we're eating. So metabolic efficiency testing is something I did for a long time until Lifetime Fitness stole it from me. So what we do is put them on a treadmill. And so say you're running, what we're looking at here is your metabolic crossover point, the percentage of carbohydrates where it starts to increase and the fat amount starts to decrease. And the more you train in what we find through testing your fat burning optimal ranges, or we'll talk about mafetone method next, max aerobic function, that you'll be able to move this level up. So we have a limited amount, as we said, we're able to preserve our muscle glycogen for higher intensities. So we're, the goal is to move that number up higher so we can be burning more fat at higher percentage. So that's metabolic efficiency point that we would do in testing and then teaching the client how to get their body to burn more fat and depend less on carbohydrates. And then you have less gut distress, nausea, diarrhea, gas bloating. Now I found one company called onyourmarknutrition.com that does some testing. So if you can look online who does metabolic testing near you, you might be interested in that and as an athlete because it gives you tons of information on where you should be training to burn fat. So metabolic efficiency to burn fat is not just how you train, 
you must work on your nutrition. But I must add the holistic method. There's a reason I created it. You can't just work on eating real food, being low carb, and training at low heart rates and training your body burn fat and doing interval training, as we'll discuss it later, after you've built that base. You have to work on the stress, the mobility, digestion, gut health, hydration, and, and the gratitude, happiness part. So they all is an important part of this, becoming a fat burning. Results during sub-maximal testing, another example of metabolic testing, improving the body use fat for fuel a sugar burner versus a fat burner. So training benefits, you'll see you're able to burn a higher percentage of fat longer duration. So I think this is the minutes during exercise and the percentage of fat that they're burning. So definitely a high carb diet versus a low carb diet. And remember the training benefits, 75% nutrition, 25% exercise to improve, improve that metabolic efficiency. So Maffetone is someone you might have heard of too. He wrote 35 probably years ago, the Maffetone training, what's his book called? Endurance training. He trained one of my, my main triathlon coaches, Mark Allen, and Maffetone was part of Mark's success of running multiple Ironman in Hawaii is because they were training at low heart rate at what's called now the MAF, max aerobic function. And training that body to burn fat as your main fuel source is much more efficient and less stress, as we said, and less GI stress. But in Ironman, we have a swim, 2.4 miles. We go bike 112, and then we run 26.2 miles somehow. I don't know how I ever did them, but it is a lot of mental work and training at that lower heart rate where you can burn mostly fat. So getting off that bike and going to that run you're not trashed. So this is something over the years that Maftone created recently, actually, seven signs of burning fat. Obviously, you know, if your clothes are fitting more loosely around the waist, if people ask you if you're losing weight, that's obvious ones. But improving your performance, your energy is better, you, you know, don't get as fatigued, mental energy focus, that's a big part. Depression is reduced, uh, training and racing improving. You can do a math test, see if you're improving your pace at that mafetone max aerobic function heart rate we'll talk about. So there's seven signs you can go into there later on my slides, but just think about the nutrition and exercise. What he looks at is, you know, the inflammation, the vitamin D, your folate, and limiting your carbohydrates exercising that aerobic engine and then they got the stress the brain and that says aging okay so are you storing too much body fat so here's some good tips maffetone had on his uh, an article i was reading signs and symptoms that your poor fat burner consumption of refined carbs body fat above normal frequent fatigue blood sugar too high or too low frequent hunger risk for chronic disease family history race performance plateau or the math test we'll get into you just are not improving so the math method is max aerobic function and it's it just is where you're burning training the body to burn fat so lower intensity exercise occurs up to a point where the body's use for fat for energy peaks so he calls it fat max after which sugar consumption quickly rises and fat lowers with higher intensity exercise. So some people use fat max to measure their thresholds, they call aerobic threshold, aerobic exercise. The exercise heart rate and intensity are closely associated with substrate utilization. So what fuel source you're using, metabolic activity, you know, looking at your stress hormones and what level of intensity, the lactate production increases at higher heart rate and higher intensity. So the max MAF heart rate is defined as aerobic, so A R T and fat max. So he'll explain more. So the math method helps improve your aerobic engine, right? So we've got the math heart rate 180 formula. So let's just skip over to it. So subtract so your age from 180 and then you decide all right, you're gonna subtract additional 10 if you are recovering from a major illness. 
you're going to subtract an additional five if you are injured or regressed or not improving in training. And if you get more than two colds or flus or other infections per year, have allergies, asthma, over fat, or in stage one or two of overtraining. So say you know your age is 50, you're gonna take 180 minus 50, and that's 30 or 130. And then so if I'm injured or you've had been sick or you're over fat just starting, you're gonna take another five off of that. So your max aerobic function would be 125 heart rate. If you've been training consistently at least four times a week for up to two years with any problems, then you just leave it 180 minus the age. So say I'm just gonna keep it at 130. And if you've been training for more than two years with any problems listed and have made progress in your math tests, you can add five beats, so 135. So what I do is take my clients, go, okay, that's 130 is your max aerobic function. That's your ceiling. So we're gonna train 130 to 110 is your aerobic engine training zone. So there's multiple benefits. You can learn more on Math Tone's website. So let's talk about Peter Defty, his optimal fat metabolism, where he talks about fat is your fuel. So there's no one size fits all as we talked about. The optimal fat metabolism is called OFM. It's the individual pathway to get you back to burning fat as your main energy source. Now, OFM is kind of the base on nutritional ketosis, but it's just kind of a platform and we can add adjustments, micro adjustments to it. But there's common challenges if people are too keto or too high carb. So that's why we have to look at bioindividuality because we're all unique individuals. So the common challenges either way, if you're not paying attention to yourself, you might find that you have less optimal dietary choices because you're too rigid in nature in both regimes, regimens. <laughs> Bonking, typical with high carb, but also you'll hear people that eat too low carbs for athletes. High intensity performance levels, typical with keto, but also can occur with high carb. GI issues can happen for keto and high carb, reduce GI issues during exercise. So people that are trying to do MCT oil, and exercise might not do well and have that disaster pants when they're racing, not so good. And then there's post extra soreness and perhaps adrenal stress. And if you listen to my part two or the ebook I'm putting together, I find, well, my book, Life is in a Race, you'll learn all about my personal story, but I think I was doing too low of carbohydrate and too much fasting. And that added extra stress. And when you're exercising more than 40 minutes, 45 minutes, that's additional stress. So your beaker of stress, I'll talk about next seminar, overfills your bucket and we've got too much going on It's overworking the stress HP axis. So the FM pyramid is going to be more individualized to optimize your performance for you as a unique individual. So they say you can smash your PR, eliminate J issues, eliminate bonking, hitting the wall, and you know, recover so much faster reducing, eliminating injuries, and turning back the aging process, take back your health. Because oxidative stress, remember, comes from exercise, comes from eating carbs, sugars, and that damages our mitochondria, the mitochondria, aging, longevity, there's a, a pattern going on. So we want to take care of the whole person. So FM pyramid, you can see here, fat adaptive metabolic state, Nutrition, not calories, stomach and gut health, we want to work on training and lifestyle, hydration, Vespa, Peter is involved in, and I am having a Vespa 30 day challenge coming up for my running once I get my distance up again. And strategic carbohydrates are placed when you need them in a higher, longer duration workout, higher intensity. So, training to be a low carb athlete. Now, Yes, we want to train those slow twitch muscle fibers. We want to get the mitochondria, that's where we're gonna burn that fat. We want to avoid overtraining and under recovery by avoiding that black hole and having the mantra of no pain, no gain. Training above the fat burning ranges, that max aerobic function, or if you get a metabolic efficiency test, you'll know specifically what your heart rates are for you but they result in not training the slow twitch muscle fibers. Training to the slow twitch muscle fibers over time 
with the right mix of training intensities. So Paul Larson and Maftone talk about that. Paul Larson's done a lot of research on HIT training, H-I-T, H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training for athletes. Food is big, right? We know food about being low carb to burn fat, being ketosis, but how do you apply that to being an endurance athlete? Metabolic flexibility, burning fat and sugar. We, we need that fat tank, but we need to be able to depend on that backup fuel tank, that rocket fuel you need at the end of a race. If we depend on burning carbs and deplete limited supplies of glycogen storage instead of the slow burning fat, we can lead to compromised health issues. And this was research article Dan Plews and Larson did, Paul Larson, that you will follow if you are into the low carb athlete research, but they wrote an article in 2015 about rethinking the role of fat oxidation. So that was a, a great article to look up. So back to OFM, you're, when you're training the body to burn fat, your optimal fat metabolism, you are improving physical performance, faster recovery, improved health, you know, all these great benefits we talk about, right? So how do you do it? Well, let's go. Key tips, Dr. Kate Shanahan's another one that's great to follow and learn about. She's big into, um, impact on my books, but uh, vegetable oils and avoiding oils. She's worked with a lot of athletic teams as the, Lakers she worked with and got them on bone broth and taken out all their processed foods and vegetable oils and refined carbohydrates. But really she had a, a good interview with my friend Mike Mutzel about burning fat and ketones helps keep you not feeling hungry, you're full. Glucose metabolism, you know, you have less fuel in the tank and the need to refuel. So having that steady fuel of energy is big. So you know all that. But I, I think the important thing I want to message here is, is metabolic typing. If you are a slow, fast, or mixed oxidizer, some people can tolerate low more carbohydrates, and that's based more at a cellular and genetic level. So optimal fat metabolism, we know that, you know, if you're the right fuel, uh, teaching your body to burn fat fuel, being intuitive athlete is a really key part, and having that nutrition, you don't need to eat as much. But just looking at, you know, the fat burning as the heart rate, we want to have that crossover point like further, the more you train this way. So how do you improve your fat burning? Well, it depends. We're all different. Start with you know, the re eliminating the refined foods, inflammatory foods, grains, vegetable oils. Avoid the high carb intake before uh, big workouts, try some fasted workouts in the morning if they're shorter. And the goal, remember, is to shift the body's metabolism to fat burning and reducing those carbohydrates and replacing them with good fats. And, you know, eating some sweet potatoes or some Vespa or some you can, you know, we'll look at that. Fasted workouts with a little coffee, maybe some MCT oil and some um, creamer sometimes works for people. Other tips are uh, for fat burning in general. Strength training is really important. Pre-workout or fasted workouts in the morning, standing up after your meal instead of sitting, help that body digest and move around. Implementing more herbs and spices and adding more fiber, apple cider vinegar, fasted workouts, vitamin D, cold thermogenesis, and Lots of great tips on the website. So this is from Ben Greenfield and uh, Microbiome Labs has some good information too on getting the body to burn fat. Fat is your fuel. And I wanna wrap up with testing and not guessing. I'm gonna finish up what fuels we can have. So test and not guess is what I do as an FDM practitioner. I have my clients do nutritional therapy assessments, but really looking at, are you eating the right food for your body? Do you have food sensitivities? Do you have leaky gut? Do you have balanced blood sugar? Using Keto Mojo is a simple thing you can do. Uh, hormone balances, we use the Dutch test and GI map and check out your liver detoxification system and it gets overloaded. So we really want to test and see if you're working at optimal levels. 
So I'll finish up with what to eat in N equals one. I always talk about eating is what, how, when, and why. So practice, you know, experiment, look at your reports. It's not a diet, it's make it sustainable. You know, I tend to do like a 5-2 keto program without thinking of it, a little more carbs on the weekend, and that matches with my training, because my training in the summer months, I'm doing longer duration biking and running, and my body can tolerate a little more carbs if it's, you know, a little more like cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, maybe we'll have um, some sweet potatoes, something like that, some potatoes with some grass-fed butter, but I always have it with butter because I like, I have to balance my blood sugar out if I get headaches. So there's some different tips there, but really just balancing your blood sugar by eating based on your metabolic type and feel full, satisfied for hours. So everyone's different. If you're racing and fueling, it's gonna be a little different as well. So Generation you can. there's S-Fuels, Vespa, F-Bombs, uh, the Vitamin Club is really good, Electrolytes, Keon has really good aminos, I like Athletic Greens, I like to do bone broth, macadamia nuts, avocados, or chia seed pudding I do a lot with almond butter. And, you know, working on carb timing, we can talk about another time, you know, how you start placing a little more carbs, train low, when you're building that base without carbs, and then when you're starting to race and add more intensity, you can kind of play with that. My friend Stephanie has a great article in her ketoendurance.co periodized nutrition article. And then Vespa has some great information on adding a little fuel. Vespa just helps you burn more fat. So it's another way to get more fat. And then there's S Fuels has another fuel source. It's, it's not you know, a lot of calories is just getting the glutamine helps your gut and gets electrolytes. It doesn't have all the sugars, just some good healthy fats and protein, the collagen. So I really love S Fuels as well. And they have a, a train and then they have a race product and they have new bars out. And then another favorite is Generation UCAN. That's a slow release carbohydrate. And we've done some podcasts with them. And that's a great one I used when I was racing. And I just had a bottle of UCAN and a bottle of water with electrolytes, and that's all I really needed for marathons, 50K, trail running, and uh, Ironmans. I'd have an end of Ironman, I'd do kind of have a Coke for my carb timing at the end when you're exhausted. You need a little something that flat Coke works magic. So that is all I want to talk about today. There's so much to go down, different rabbit holes, but really training the whole you is important. The eight elements, holistic method, nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, movement, digestion, hydration, happiness, and play, gratitude, laughter is all important part of my coaching program. And if you want to know more, I do a FDN health detective type of work that's 90 day program or longer. Most people need six months. If you have a little more health issues, we do coaching calls each week and you know work on training peaks. And sometimes I just do a 30-day program with people to assess their nutritional therapy and their fueling and the racing program. So if you want to schedule a call with me, head to debbiepotts.net. I'll put a copy of the ebook when it's out on how to train a low-carb athlete. I put all these slides because I have so many slides, I just can't decide which to talk about. So part two, up next time about chronic stress, how it impacts the whole you, the whole athlete, and mitochondria disease, big thing, talk about and working on how we need to work on intermittent fasting, not too much, not too little, working on eating real food, working on digestion, but then also looking at is endurance exercise really good for us? And even though it's, I don't think it is, <laughs> to over 45 minutes, all this long stuff we do, but I have some information on that from Maffetone and Paul Larson, and they did a good study a few years ago on the HP axis and training and the relationship between fitness and health. But that is... What I want to share today, really, I know you want to know about how to train as low-carb athletes. So, you know, look at the holistic method and hopefully that can help you make sure you're not just 
focusing on nutrition and exercise, but you're working on that sleep, that's when your body recovers and repairs. And you know, you have to look at really hydrating, getting your electrolytes, putting sea salt in your water, making sure you have time with non-athletic friends, that you're doing some fun stuff. When you're eating, you're having like the megasporbatics and having some digestive enzymes, HCL betaine, you're having some omega-3 fish oils at in your supplement program, um, you know, and pick, take magnesium at night, lavender essential oil to help sleep. I take CBD sometimes, but that's great after hard training days to get a little more muscle relaxers. Some magnesium is always good. And really working on stress, and that's a lot in the next topic in my other ebooks. In my book, Life is Not a Race. So hopefully this can help you and let me know your questions as I might have just touched on a few things because there's so much to go into. So I look forward to hearing from you. Head to debbiepotts.net and we can talk a little bit more about what you're curious about and what your struggles are. You know, really teaching you how to get your body back and how to get your environment self back because I've been there. I went down this journey in 2013. I was doing everything we're talking about. I was doing low carb. I was doing fasting. I was training at low heart rates, doing speed workouts, lifting weights, doing yoga. But you know what? I was doing too much, too much of everything. Getting up at, you know, before four in the morning and not stopping until nine at night. So that's why I say, you know, my book's called Life is Not a Race and how I was racing from the time I woke up until I went to bed at night. And really, I'm trying to help all of you avoid going through what I had happened starting 2013. Now it's 2020. And I still haven't been able to race because I'm always working on healing everything that got broken. So avoid getting to be that broken and burned out athlete by training smart. Training the, with the holistic method. We want to address all those issues, the eight, eight elements, not issues, areas of opportunity you need to find out, do nutritional therapy, and really I strongly believe in lab testing, functional lab testing, get the GI map test, organic acids test, the Dutch hormone panel, leaky gut test, you can do vibrant wellness, food sensitivities, I can, you can order these through me if you do the coaching program, but you have to work with a practitioner to order them. So let me know. This is what I'm doing. This is what I love to do, and I'm here to help. So join my journey, and I hope to talk to you soon. Okay, DebbiePotts.net, and you can find us on Facebook, Low Carb Athlete, and YouTube and Instagram, The Low Carb Athlete. See ya.